Welcome to Your Career Story Podcast, a show that's designed for rock star professionals looking for that extra booster shot of confidence in their careers. Whether you're trying to get clarity on a job transition, want some work-life balance inspiration, or need a strategy to snag that promotion or raise, this podcast is for you. I'm your host, Jenna Viviano, ex-Wall Streeter turned startup junkie who now coaches hundreds of clients, empowering them to take back control of the job search and land their dream job. So sit back, grab a glass of wine, and prepare yourself for your weekly boost of career confidence. and welcome back to the Your Career Story podcast, Enneagram at Work bonus bingeable edition. Here we are. We are finally, we've done a long day of filming actually, (laughs) recording this, Lauren and I. We're on um, type eight. And just as a reminder for everybody that's listening, the Enneagram is designed to be a tool for self-awareness. Yes, this is a disclaimer. We have to do it. So if you're using this to relate to other people, maybe at work or just in your life, we want the purpose of this to be used in compassion and understanding. The purpose is not to fix people, though you may want to do that. We encourage <laughs> you not to do that. That's not the goal. So Lauren, let's chat about type eight. Tell me what a type eight is like. Okay. The type eight is the powerful person. And sometimes you're going to hear them called a challenger. Um, So eights are really good at taking charge of their environment. They know how to mobilize to get things done. Mm -hmm. They make really good leaders um, and they will stand up for the positions and the people they care about. Mm -hmm. Their challenge, though, is to moderate their forcefulness, to become adaptable in different situations and to avoid creating unnecessary conflict. Mm, Conflict. So, yes. <laughs> they're not afraid of conflict. They're not right? afraid of conflict. Okay. And in fact, they feel like conflict is connection sometimes. Wow. Yes. Okay. So this you is really may, interesting. Right. You may be experiencing super high intensity from an eight yeah. and they may be experiencing it as a great connection that they're having wow. with you. I feel like that for people that have managers that they feel, I feel like because you just said that a lot of leaders tend to can be eights, mm-hmm. right? Obviously, any of the types can be, an, yes. be a leader. But if you see that oftentimes with eights, and if you have a manager or a boss or a leader in your organization that is an eight, this is going to be really, really beneficial for you. So yes. we're going to go through the strengths and weaknesses for if you are an eight and some growth patterns. But specifically for you, those of you that work with eights, I want you to pay very, very special, take some notes about how to communicate yes. well, and also just how to receive from them as well. Yes. Because I think that's equally important when having a cohesive, calm working environment. (laughs) Yes, definitely. So let's talk about some strengths and weaknesses. Okay. So eights are very powerful, Um, Mm. powerful personalities. Mm. They are big in the room that they are in. Um, They don't like to be controlled. Mm. So they, one of their biggest fears is vulnerability or weakness. And so because they do not want to be in a vulnerable position, they don't want to be controlled. Now, the misunderstanding is a lot of people think eight are controlling wow. and they can be if they're not very self-aware. Not healthy. Right. But what they are trying to do is to take control so that they are not going to be controlled. So if there is a vacuum of leadership in a situation, they're going to take it because it's their responsibility in their mind so that wow. they do not have to be controlled by someone else. This can also make them rescuers of people because they are mm. so strong and because they do not want to be weak. Sure. When they see people who actually are in genuinely vulnerable positions, mm-hmm. they want to help them. They feel compelled to go towards them. So wow. you'll see an eight look like an activist a whole lot and rallying people behind a cause. And a lot of times they can be described as like a bulldozer that is creating the path for other people. (laughs) So I like the second part of that. The bulldozer, I was like, yeah, I've seen some eights. Right. Yes. And so if you think about a bulldozer that doesn't have somebody wise controlling it, it can just go wherever it wants to go and just take down things in the pathway. Mm -hmm. But if somebody who is wise has a plan and is sending the bulldozer where it needs to go. So if if an eight is Mm self-aware and making a path with intention Mm -hmm. for their team to follow along behind, then it's a great thing um, because they can take the hits. They can take 
um, the things that are negative and make a clear way for people behind them. Mm, I love that. I love that. And so what are some of their weaknesses? All right. So weaknesses are always strengths that have gone out of control. Yeah. Um, so a tendency for eights um, is to over identify with their anger. So when an eight is very self-aware, anger is going to present itself like passion and they're, they will be angry about the right things. It's like so, a justice minded yes, anger. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of being angry at individuals and wanting to take down individuals, they'll be angry at systems mm -hmm. and wanting to figure out how to fix something. Sure. So when they over identify with their anger, sometimes this can make them vengeful. Mm -hmm. um, they will want to not just win, but destroy their opponent. And they are powerful and they can do it. So mm. eights have to be very careful with the power that they have because when they wield it correctly, it can be life-changing. Um, sure. You know, people like Martin Luther King have yes. been thought to have been an eight. No, we don't know because we of don't course. know his motivations. But, you know, you can do great things with this passion and with this anger. So you don't want to eliminate it, mm -hmm. but you have to direct it towards the correct things. Mm -hmm. Eights can be excessive in all areas of life. So they work too much. They can eat too much. They can exercise too much. So mm. uh, it's a lot of too muchness wow. um, when an eight is coming from an unhealthy place. Mm -hmm. um, so just being aware that you have limits mm. and that limits are okay. Eights can sometimes be territorial. So you might experience an eight boss who doesn't like you to close your door to your office because he can't see or she can't see what you're doing mm. um, or may just bust or in. Or doesn't like if you work remotely. Right. <laughs> yes. Or, you know, just bust in on your space because I'm the boss. This is all my space, you know. Which can be very frustrating. <laughs> yes. I yes. would not like that. <laughs> no, no. So it's just have to be aware that even if you are the leader, you are not necessarily, <laughs> people have their own autonomy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I feel like it's funny. You were talking about the anger piece and I was having a conversation with a friend of mine. We were at dinner and she's, she's an eight mm -hmm. and she was saying the emotion she feels most regularly is anger. Yes. Which is such a, I never even yes. thought about, there's very few occasions that I feel angry. Mm -hmm. Like it's very rare that I have the anger emotion. It's more shame, which is typically mine. Yeah. But is that common with eights? Is like, that's the that's oh. a very, very like real emotion. Absolutely. Times. <laughs> Absolutely. And we are going to talk about what to do with that okay. and what to do about that when we get to the growth. Okay. Perfect. But yes, they are always, that is the primary emotion that they're going to feel first. And what's good to know for us, if we are working with an eight, and I guess that's a good time to transition Perfect. to that yeah, is when you see an eight's anger, it's going to explode quickly, but then it's gone. So they're unlike other types that simmer and mm -hmm. will hold on to things forever. Mm -hmm. um, it's more like big flash and then it's over. Sure. And then they're done with it. They've moved on. So you may not have you, moved like, on. It's like whiplash almost for people right. that are on their team. Exactly. <laughs> like you probably have not moved on because you're feeling things about the anger. Yeah. But once it's done, it's done. And they just want to move on from it. Mm. Have we convinced you to get obsessed with the Enneagram yet? Yeah, we thought so, which is why we wanted to send you into this holiday season with a little something something so you can continue your Enneagram education. Head on over to www.genevaviano.com slash type to download our free guide, Learn Your Type, Love Your Coworker. This guide is a complement to the bonus bingeable podcast series, and we've made it stupid simple to understand the Enneagram, your type, and how it can work for your career. We really, really, truly believe that the Enneagram is the best tool out there for teams. So we want to equip you to be the best rockstar professional you can be. Again, head on over to www.genevaviano.com slash type to download Learn Your Type, Love Your Coworker. Okay, let's hop back into my conversation with Lauren. So you want to understand if you're working with an eight, that the energy that the eight brings mm -hmm. is also going to come with that passion. So I think a lot of times people want to harness that eight energy because they can get so much done, mm -hmm. but they don't want to take the passion that comes with it. Yeah. And eights a lot of time feel like they're too much for people. Mm. And like their anger, you know, makes people not want to interact with them. And so I think we need to always... In talking to eights, not 
show them that their anger is sending people away. Mm. So a practice with eights is if they're coming at you with some high intensity sure. to stand your ground. So we're not raising the stakes and firing back, mm-hmm. but just being firm and what you need to express. And that will cause the eight to see that they have, to have an equal that they are contending with. And so when they view someone as weak, mm. um, not in the vulnerable sense, like we talked about before, but it's kind of like, uh, eh, they're just weak. Yeah. They do not respect that. So, when they are having a moment of pressing forward at sure. you, when you stand your ground, they that, respect you. They more. respect you more. It's like they enjoy the the debate almost. Absolutely, like I have a they friend, want a sparring partner. Yes. So yeah. I have a friend who has um, somebody at work who is an eight, and they were talking about a very similar situation where one of the coworkers was probably the weaker party. Mm-hmm. Right? Would be that person would receive them as a weaker party, and as soon as she stood up to that gentleman, it hasn't bothered her since. Yeah, which is so interesting yeah. because I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, and just like fours will sometimes test people with emotion that yeah. we talked about before, eights will do that with this. Can I trust you to bring me what's real? So mm. they, just like fours, can spot a fake from a mile away. And so they will kind of poke and prod to kind of see where you are sure, and see who they're dealing with. See who they're dealing with. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I feel like now that I know some eights, I have a little bit more empathy. Yes. <laughs> I was, I will be honest. I feel like sometimes with eights with me, is it's a hard because I'm very passionate too, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I don't approach situations very similarly. And so yes. I think it's very hard for me. And this is my own thing of having to learn how to relate better to eights because it is hard for me. It comes across as very like in your face. Yes. And so I'm just kind of like, what do I do with it? But this is helpful. Right. Good. Yeah. Thank you. I'm yeah. glad. All right. You want to be direct with eights um, when you have an issue with them. If you try to beat around the bush and sugarcoat it, then they are going to see that as weakness mm-hmm. and want to do the opposite. Yeah. So if you're just clear, you want to get to the point quickly. Yeah. They don't want to hear a whole litany of reasons of things. It's just, here's what it is. Here's what's upsetting me. How can we fix it? Wow. All right. So if you are an eight okay. and you're listening to this, what are some things that those eight individuals can do to grow? Okay. So it's important for all of us to grow. So here's what we were talking about with your friend, feeling like anger is her primary emotion. Mm-hmm. So what eights want to do is when they feel the anger pop up, mm-hmm. know that anger is actually a secondary emotion. Oh, so you want to try to get one layer deeper than that. So the anger is what's being displayed But what's under it? Could it be sadness about something? Could it be anxiety about Mm. something? And to slow down enough to take the time to explore that. Mm -hmm. um, When you start to feel the rage coming up, going, is that justified anger about something that needs anger? Right. Or is it anger masking a different emotion? Sure. Yeah, that totally makes sense. (laughs) Is it masking a different emotion? I love what you said there. Okay. So the second practice for growth for an eight would be to slow down long enough to think things through beyond instinct. Mm -hmm. Eights operate out of their instinct. Their gut drives them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes their gut doesn't have all the information. So you Mm -hmm. need to include other people on your team. And most of the time, other people on your team are going to need more time than you to make a decision. Um, You want to give them space and time to work that decision Mm -hmm. out and to also hear other ideas that you may not have thought of. Mm -hmm. And on that, here's the third one, practicing inviting dialogue into your interactions with others. So not Mm -hmm. just for decision making, but just in your life. Eights have a tendency to just give direction, give direction, give direction. But inviting someone in to have more of a conversation where right. you're receiving from them, they're receiving from you, especially when it's someone that you don't respect. Oh, that's going to be so hard it's for Nate. It's so hard. Yeah. It's so, so hard. But yeah, just because someone doesn't feel strong doesn't mean they don't have something to bring. Right. That's super important. I love that. So if somebody thinks they might be an eight, where can they find that information out from? There's a lot of different places to look, but I always like going to The Road Back to You, Mm -hmm. which is um, a book by Ian Morgan Cron Mm -hmm. and Suzanne Stabile. It is a great introduction to all nine types. 
Or if you don't want to wait on Amazon, you can go straight to um, the Enneagram Institute. They have it's lots great of, resources. yeah, they've got great descriptions of all nine types and they even talk about how different types interact with each other. Mm-hmm. And so that may help you um, narrow it down as well. Yeah. Um, the best way to learn what you are is to talk to somebody who has been trained to coach like yeah. I have. Yeah. Um, so if you wanted to bring me in for a team training or um, individual coaching to really dig deep and get to, we just barely skim the surface on all of these today. Um, And there's lots more layers. And that's what I have been trained to do and to help your team walk through. Yeah. So Lauren's amazing and she's not tooting her horn enough here. So I'll toot it for her. (laughs) She's really amazing at the work that she does. And I think for a lot of people as a career coach, what I've seen with most people that come through my doors, it's they never really want to switch total careers. It really comes down to when we get honest with ourselves that it's really about the culture or subculture or the people within the organization that turn them off in the profession or the industry. And so if we can do some work on this end to help create more cohesion in the workplace and help just to have more understanding, it's going to make a happier place for people. And Lauren can help literally make your workplace a happier place. So hire her and you can find her at www.laurenelkinsgray with an a.com. And she has a freebie for you guys. If you want to learn more about the Enneagram at work, you can totally check that out. Also on her website at laurenelkinsgray with an a.com slash freebie. So guys, we hope this was super valuable for you and we are going to move on to type nine. All right. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for listening to Your Career Story Podcast. I would love, 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 love to get to meet you. And there are a couple of ways that we can connect in between episodes. First and foremost, you know I love my LinkedIn. Second is via Instagram. And third is over on my website. I actually have a special spot just for you full of fun, free resources. So all you have to do is go to www.genaviviano.com backslash resources. Super simple for a bunch of freebies that will help you boost your career. Hope to see you next week.